Hi everyone, in today's video we're going to be talking about oversupply of milk or overproduction of milk. So stay tuned to the end of the video to learn about what is an oversupply, some symptoms of an oversupply, what causes it, and what you can do about it. My name is Cassie Reyes. I am a registered nurse and a board certified lactation consultant. And I'm also the co-founder of People's Lactation here in Washington, DC. We do have virtual visits available. I'll leave a link for that down below. Welcome to the community. And we're so excited that you found us here. If you're new to the community, I post a new video each week. So if you wanna be up to date on every video that I post, go ahead and subscribe down below and hit the bell. You're gonna be notified each week when I post a new video. So what is an oversupply exactly and how do you know if you have one? Oversupply is when your milk production is higher than the nutritional needs of your baby. What are some symptoms of an oversupply and how do you know if you have an oversupply? We're gonna talk about how the symptoms of an oversupply can show up both in the parent and in the baby. In the case of the parent, an oversupply can lead to poor drainage of the breast or chest tissue, which in turn can lead to clogged ducts and can have this cascading effect of the milk just sitting in the tissue, which then can lead to clogged ducts. It can lead to mastitis or an infection of the tissue. And if it gets really bad, it can lead to an abscess, which is basically a pocket of an infection that you need to have surgically taken care of in a lot of cases. Um, both mastitis and an abscess would probably require you to be on antibiotics. Most people notice that they have an oversupply when they start noticing symptoms in their baby. So your baby may do quicker than normal feeds. They may seem hungry very frequently, even though they just ate. They may pull off of the nipple frequently. They might bite down on the nipple during a feed to help slow down the flow because an oversupply also tends to go hand in hand with a fast milk ejection reflex or fast letdown. You may notice that your baby is choking or gagging on the milk at the breast and that's why they're pulling back a lot. Um, your baby might be really gassy or colicky. This may be caused by what is known in lactation as a hind milk, fore milk imbalance. A fore milk, hind milk imbalance is when your baby isn't getting the right balance of these two types of milk, and I'll explain the difference. So your fore milk is more abundant in the breast or chest tissue. It is high in carbohydrates. It's high in milk sugar, lactose and it's also um, contains a hunger hormone called ghrelin. So that's why when your baby gets a lot of this for milk, which is more present in a, a full breast or chest, the, your baby may seem hungry more frequently. When your baby fills up on this for milk, they're gonna get a little bit less of the hind milk. Um, hind milk is more abundant in a less full breast or chest and the hind milk is higher in fats and in it's just more calorie dense in general. So when your baby has an imbalance or is getting too much for milk because of an oversupply, you may see that your baby is gassy, the kind, their GI system's kind of overloaded with that lactose from the for milk. They may be extra gassy, they may be colicky. Um, sometimes a telltale sign of an oversupply is when your baby may have green or frothy poops. Um, this is caused by that kind of overcharging the GI system with that, that milk, sugar, or lactose. So the discomfort that we're seeing in baby combined with the discomfort that we're often seeing in the parent from decreased or poor emptying often leads to a cascade of problems that may end up leading to early weaning. So what are the causes of oversupply and what can you do about it? So one of the initial causes of oversupply can be too much stimulation with a pump early on or overuse of galactagogues, which are 
herbs or foods that can increase your milk supply. It could also be caused by some prescription medications. So if you are experiencing an oversupply, you could examine your medication list and talk to your provider about possible side effects. And then there is what's known as idiopathic oversupply or unknown cause. Some people just have um, a bit of a hormone imbalance or they just have excess capacity of their tissue and experience an oversupply that lasts beyond the first couple weeks postpartum. So the good news is there are a few things you can do to manage an oversupply and some of them are pretty simple that you can try on your own and some of them are a little bit more complex and you might want to work with a professional. The first is optimizing the latch. So figuring out the right time and the right position for latching. Sometimes you may need to express a little bit through that first letdown before you put your baby on. And that way the letdown isn't as quick or fast and furious when your baby's first latching on. Sometimes doing a laid back position and for information on how to set that up, I'll leave a video up above. Um, a laid back position can help with gravity, not moving the milk out as quickly. So if you're laying back and your baby is on top of you feeding, it can help with that fast letdown. Frequent burping can also help. So if you take little breaks for baby to burp, it can help with some of that gassiness and colickiness that we talked about earlier. So the second thing you might need to do is to modify your feeding or your pumping schedule or both. And this step, I would recommend that you are working with a lactation consultant to make sure that you don't over, um, so that you don't overdo it on downregulating your milk supply because some of these things can really have a quick impact. But you may need to work on decreasing the amount of time that you're pumping or the frequency, which would be done really slowly. You would do a slow taper um, on the pumping or you could be recommended to do what is called block feeding. Block feeding is where your baby eats on one side for a designated amount of time. So your baby would eat, for example, on the left side for three hours, and then they would have access to the right side for three hours. And this helps them get more access to the hind milk on that side. And also it helps send signals to the other side to slow down production by having that tissue be so full of milk. However, if you are doing this, um, it's important to keep an eye out for signs and symptoms of plugged ducts. And if you're feeling really overly full in the beginning of starting some block feeding, your lactation consultant might have you do a teeny tiny bit of emptying for a couple of minutes just to prevent any block ducts from happening. Another thing that can be helpful are there are some herbs, um, peppermint, sage, there's a few others that can lower milk supply. You definitely want to do any anything that you take medication wise or herb wise you would want to check with your doctor, with your lactation consultant and make sure that you're doing it in the safest way possible. If these last three steps don't really help, the final step is probably um, some sort of medical intervention or taking a medication. Sometimes medications like Sudafed that dry up secretions can lower your milk supply, but this is something definitely to be done with a provider due to potential side effects. Um, and it also works really fast, so you don't want to um, overdo it because even one dose of Sudafed can actually decrease your milk supply by a quarter. So, and other medications are available that lower um, the amount of prolactin or oxytocin in your body and in turn lowering your milk supply. So talk to your doctor and your lactation consultant about what would be the best option for you. All right, so this video was actually made um, after a question was asked on um, one of my other videos about whether or not oversupply and an imbalance of lactose was actually a thing. So now you know, there's the answer. I hope that that was helpful. If you guys have any other topics that you want me to cover or questions that you want me to address, 
Feel free to comment in the community, comment on any of the videos. I love to hear from you. I would love it if you subscribe to the community down below and hit the bell so you're notified each week when I post a new video. Um, down below, I'm also going to leave a link for a free survival guide for the first few days of lactation. So if you want to check that out, go ahead and grab it down below. I am so excited that you found the channel. I will talk to you all next week. I hope that you found this video helpful and I'll talk to you soon. Bye.